Hello, long time no see. It's time for a health update video. I've been away for a while. I don't even know for how long, but it's because I was experimenting with so many different things and I learned so much. I uncovered so much about my health and I think finally for the first time in my whole healing journey, I've actually uncovered the real root cause, the real root cause that was the reason for all of my health issues from digestion to thyroid to allergy issues, my skin issues, everything at all. So I'm very excited to share all of that information with you in today's video. And I really hope that it will give you some inspiration and some ideas to apply in your own healing journey. All in all, I'm still gluten-free. It's been almost 11 months now and I'm planning to go on for maybe another six months or so until hopefully I can go back to eating it, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm also dairy free. I recently tried dairy, a little bit of uh, raw goat cheese again, and it was a no-go. Still getting the same symptoms, so I will continue healing my gut and then try again a few months down the line. Because the truth is, not eating everything is never good enough for me. I will not give up until I heal my gut completely and I can eat everything. So that is something that I promised myself and I will keep striving for. So I talked to you in my last video about my suspicions that all my issues were caused by gut bacteria imbalance. I was focusing on bacteria because I knew that certain gut bacteria could produce histamine and I thought that that was the cause of my so-called histamine intolerance or some kind of weird histamine overload symptoms that I was having. But then the more I read and the more I was analyzing my symptoms, I realized that it looked more like the mast cell uh, activation disorder than just histamine intolerance. And the thing is that no matter how low I went, uh, low on histamine and foods I went, it didn't make a difference. The foods, the histamine from foods absolutely didn't make a difference. My problem was that my mast cells were um, getting degranulated or in other words kind of just exploding and destroying themselves for no reason for things that normally shouldn't cause anything and anything like that and while doing that they were releasing the histamine and all the other inflammatory molecules inside. And then when I started researching the causes of mast cell activation disorder. Of course, gut bacteria could be one of the reasons, as well as many others, but what came up over and over again was also candida. For some reason, I did not consider candida at the beginning because I thought like candida had nothing to do with histamine intolerance or mast cell activation disorder, but in fact, it does. And then I started researching the symptoms of candida and it very much fit the whole picture of my health. So I started looking into the best ways to kill candida and I decided to try caprylic acid and some olive, olive leaf extract, um, also grapefruit seed extract, kind of alternating. So I started with that and the olive leaf extract alone didn't make much of a difference. But when I added the caprylic acid, I saw something very interesting. So I took it and from the next day, I had much less hay fever. And at the point where I started taking it, my hay fever was crazy. My uh, mast cell activation disorder symptoms were going crazy. And then I started taking caprylic acid and two days later, it was all gone. If you're wondering what mast cell activation disorder looks like, for example, Let's say my eye starts itching out of the blue, itching in a crazy way, you just cannot resist it. If you start scratching it a little bit or just rubbing it gently, that eye will start itching even more. It will literally start burning. Then a few seconds later, the other eye will start also itching and burning and getting swollen. Then I'll start sneezing. Then I'll get a headache. Then I'll get a burning throat, like really, really burning, painful throat. And then very likely I'll start getting stomach ache and then very likely I'll have runny stools as well. So it's a kind of systemic reaction to some kind of irritant or some kind of something that shouldn't really cause its reaction because it's just a gentle rubbing on my eye. And that alone was enough to cause this massive all body experience. After I started taking caprylic acid, 
all these symptoms completely disappeared for one week. So that kind of signaled to me that I was definitely on the right track because clearly Candida was very much involved in what was happening with me. And then a week later, everything slowly started coming back and the hay fever and all those mast cell disorder symptoms came back. But now I knew what the culprit was, Candida. Look who came to visit me and to greet you all. This is, this is my little Pilar. He's so cute. So now let's talk about the root cause that I finally uncovered. So a couple of years ago, I did the hair mineral analysis testing and I shared the results with you. It was actually very interesting and I would highly recommend to you to, to try hair mineral analysis testing if you haven't done it yet. It's actually really informative and it's probably the best way to test your levels of um, the beneficial minerals but also heavy metals and to get an overall picture of what's happening in your body in terms of nutrition. The problem is that it's not so easy to interpret and especially in somebody who has heavy, heavy metal toxicity, especially mercury toxicity, all the minerals can be completely messed up so you really can't just look at the chart and and judge it directly, it becomes much more complicated. And that's exactly what happened to me. But at that time I wasn't aware. So my test was really strange because it showed all of the mineral levels completely out of range. Almost all of them were below the range. And I'm not just talking a little bit below the range or at the bottom of the range. They were literally at the bottom, like at the floor. And there were a couple of them. There was calcium and magnesium. There were above the range and there was zinc that was in the optimal range so out of all the minerals there were probably maybe around 20 out of all of them zinc was the only one in the range most of the others were on the floor like literally at the bottom and two were above the range so this is something that is called mineral derangement and it's caused by mercury toxicity i had no clue about that at that time I was totally confused by what the test showed. I thought that I just had issues with digesting things maybe. My mercury results came out as normal, so I didn't even think that there was anything there. The test did show aluminum toxicity, which didn't surprise me at all because I used really heavy antiperspirants for years and years and years before I woke up and became into natural and I turned into natural living. So it kind of didn't surprise me at all. This whole theory about the mineral derangement comes from the work of Dr. Cutler, who was probably the most famous doctor when it comes to chelating heavy metals and dealing with heavy metals. He calls it the counting rules. So in order to do that, you need to have a test from a particular lab. Mine from, was from a diff different lab. In theory, it wouldn't really be so easy to do the counting with that lab. But the thing is, my tests were so out of range, they were so clearly deranged that even with a different lab, it was just obvious that everything was fitting the counting rules. Mineral derangement, in other words, is the mineral transport problem and mercury does that. It just kind of prevents the minerals from being transported into the cells properly. So they get deposited into all kinds of organs and tissues. They get deposited into the hair, they get excreted, um, but they don't go into the cells where they should be going. So mercury toxicity, if you're wondering where I got that from, and to be honest, a lot of us, a lot of people have it, I think it's because, well, first of all, all the vaccines I got as a kid, and then I got another one for tick encephalitis, tick-borne encephalitis when I was around 12. All of my health issues started around the age of 12. I thought it was because of puberty, but puberty alone should not really cause anything like this. I think it's precisely that vaccine that really finished everything for me. And then when I was a kid, twice I had a thermometer break next to my bed, once at home and once at a hospital. So that probably gave me quite a bit of mercury exposure as well. I can only spe speculate obviously where it came from. I never got any amalgam fillings, so I didn't get any from there. But I guess vaccines and the two thermometers and all the fish I've eaten in my life has probably 
contributed to the problem. The thing is, for a regular person, all these things wouldn't be such an issue because the body would be able to detox those toxic metals easily. But I suspected for a long time, and I'm pretty sure that I have the MTHFR mutations. I'm not sure exactly which ones because, to be honest with you, I don't really want to do the genetic testing because I don't want companies to have my genetic code. Call me paranoid, but I'm not happy sharing my genetic code with anyone else, especially corporations. So I'm not going to do that. But I'm pretty sure from the symptoms from the family history that both my mom's side and my dad's side had MTHFR. So I think that's probably where the problems came from. My body was just not able to detox the heavy metals probably, properly and everything just kind of built up, built up, built up until I got really sick and just couldn't deal with it anymore. Also, when I was three and then five, those two times I got to stay at a hospital once because I had appendicitis, another time because I had urine incontinence, so I was being in my bed when I was five years old or so and pretty much every single person on my dad's side had that issue as well which, funnily enough, is also a sign of mercury toxicity, but at that time, obviously, we didn't know. So I had to go to the hospital, and they did some kind of treatments to me for a week or so, or 10 days, every single day. They were putting me under to do those kind of procedures. So I must have got a lot of anesthesia, a lot of toxic things into me that probably contributed to my problems with detoxing as well, as well as all the antibiotics I got all my life because of all these infections. My immune system was really messed up when I was a child. So when I realized that my uh, hair mineral testing showed mineral toxicity, a hidden mineral toxicity, I started looking into both mental and physical mercury symptoms and literally all of them fit me like a tea fit my life, fit my health history so much. I'd say I probably had maybe 95% of them. It's just crazy. It kind of explained a lot of things and it gave reasons for everything. And honestly, I felt really relieved that I finally potentially found something that could explain everything that ever happened to me. And then Candida. Let's go back to Candida and how that relates to heavy metals. So the body is actually really clever. It doesn't do anything for no reason. It doesn't just let Candida grow out of, uh, out of balance for nothing. It actually does that because Candida protects the body from the heavy metals, especially mercury. So Candida kind of feeds on the heavy metals and it kind of traps them in the biofilm and keeps them trapped away from the body so it doesn't damage the body as much. So believe it or not, Candida is actually trying to protect us. And when we try to kill the Candida, we actually release those heavy metals and then we might lose the symptoms of Candida for a bit while we're doing the tre treatment but we get all the symptoms of the heavy metal toxicity instead, which are very likely to be worse. So that's exactly what happened to me. When I started treating myself for candida with caprylic acid and other things, I felt great for a week or so, but then everything came back full force and worse. The symptoms were different. The candida symptoms lessened, but then I got other more neurological symptoms, which I believe came from the mercury that got released. So it's kind of... You just really can't win in this case. And the only way to win is to cleanse those heavy metals. And so that became my next focus. So Leonardo woke up from his nap way too early. I thought I would manage to film the video and edit it, but he woke up. So you'll have to be here with us until the end. He's 14 months now, guys. Look how big he is. He's such a good boy. <laughs> Hey, what's that? This is a camera. Oh, and it's your mommy. He can see us in the in the screen. Look at that. That's us. So anyway, candida also happens to cause leaky gut, which I think is the explanation for my gluten antibodies and potentially casein antibodies because I seem to be reacting to it even more than gluten. So once candida is gone, once the heavy metals are gone, then candida will be gone and then the leaky gut should heal and then hopefully I'll be able to eat everything. So that's really my action plan. Also, for example, I talked about in quite a few videos in the past that my mom, for example, she's always losing potassium 
somewhere and she has to take potassium and just has to take medication that kind of preserves potassium in the bloodstream she has some kind of problems with potassium retaining and my aunt had exactly the same thing my potassium is also always close to the bottom of the range so something is definitely there also my mom and sister and me we have to take magnesium all the time because somehow we burn it somehow very quickly and mineral derangement because of mercury toxicity could basically explain why we have this issue i'm still taking probiotics and uh, bolardi um, i've been doing that for four months i think and i will keep doing it until i'm totally fine until my gut is healed they've been helping me a lot with my digestion hey this guy must be hungry after his nap so we'll go to eat something soon and you might be wondering what exactly I'm going to do to get rid of the mercury and the aluminum that I'm toxic in. And the answer is something called Advanced TRS. It's a really cool product that is very famous among parents of autistic children. It helps them so much. So that's what I'm trying right now. I've been doing it for the last three weeks and it's been miraculous for me. But I don't want to go too much into detail in this video. I think it deserves a whole video just for itself. So I'm going to make it soon. And for now, I really hope that you found this interesting. I am super excited to keep sharing my journey with you because so many people suffer from all kinds of health issues and food sensitivities and suffering from it for all their life but the truth is i'm sure there are ways to get rid of them and to get back the freedom of eating everything and feeling great so if i do succeed i think it will help a lot of people so stay tuned thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next one hopefully about the advanced trs it's been so amazing for me so bye for now